welcome to the Backyard Professor Math videos. We're going to crunch some numbers in this video. I want to show you several expressions using a lot of the information that we've learned in the previous videos. We're now going to begin to put some of this stuff together. You will find in many books where they tell you to evaluate the expression when a equals 4 and b equals negative 2. You will find things like this all the time. This is called plugging and chugging. This is excellent practice for algebra. Let's suppose we're given the first expression 9 plus a. Piece of cake. What you do is you plug the value of a we're given the answer to the variable. We're given the value of the variable. Now when we're given an expression, we plug this value into that and solve the equation. So this is simply 9 plus a is 4 equals 13. Piece of cake. What if we're given the expression a over b? Now we're given a fraction, but we know the values of the variables. This is going to get us used to working with variables. A is 4, so we pop that 4 right there. B is negative 2, and now we solve the expression. What is 4 over negative 2? Remember, dividing by a negative is the same as multiplying by a negative as far as finding out whether the answer is positive or negative. A negative divided by a positive is a negative because this is an odd number of negatives. So this is simply negative 2. See, it's that simple. There's nothing to this. What if we're given the expression 3 times A times B? A is 4, so this is going to go 3 times 4 B is negative 2, so we put in negative 2 for B, and then we solve the equation. 3 times 4 is 12, times negative 2, a positive, times a negative is a negative. So this is going to be 12 times 2 is negative 24. Okay, piece of cake. What if we're given the expression 6 times A? just 6a. That means it's multiplied. a is 4, so this becomes 6 times 4, which is 24. Piece of cake. What if we're given the expression 3ab? It's the same thing as this one, except it's written without the parenthesis. When you see a, an equation like this, this is telling you 3 is multiplied by this variable as well as this variable. We've already done it. 3 times 4 times negative 2 is negative 24. It's that simple. What if we're given the expression b divided by a? Now this is the opposite of a divided by b. a is 4. So we know this is 4. b is negative 2, so we plug in negative 2. This looks like negative 2 fourths. However, this can be reduced to negative 1 half. Take 2 out of 2, it becomes 1. Take 2 out of 4, it becomes 2. And we carry our negative over. You see how those expressions are starting to work? Let's do some more. Got to make room, though. What if we have the expression a plus b over b? We're in a fraction. a is valued at 4. So this becomes 4 plus negative 2 over b, 
which is negative 2. So you do the top part of the fraction first. 4 plus negative 2 is 2 because we're adding. We start at 4 and we go to the left. We go down 2 units and this is negative 2. So this becomes negative 2. This becomes 2 over negative 2. In a division, we have an odd number of negatives. Therefore, that's going to equal negative 1. A number divided by itself is always 1. Piece of cake, right? What if we're given a squared minus b? Now, we've done exponents. We know this is telling us a times a minus b. What is a? 4. So this becomes 4 times 4, which is 16, minus a negative 2. Now here we have our double negative, and the very best way to do a double negative is negate the negative. So this is 16 plus 2, which is 18. See, that's not so bad, is it? That's really not too tough to do. What if we're given an expression, 9a over b? This is saying that 9 is multiplied by a and divided by b. So here's a, which is 4. This becomes 9 times 4 over negative 2. So we fill in the blanks. We plug and chug. You notice we can combine numbers with variables because that's all a variable is. We just don't know its value normally. In these kinds of equations, in these kinds of exercises, we're given the value and then we plug it in and do the work. 9 times 4 is 36. Divided by negative 2. What's that equal? A negative divided by a positive is a negative. That's going to be negative 18. Whoop. I drew that one weird, didn't I? Negative 18 for that one. Got one more real good one to do, and then we'll change the evaluation of the variables. This is excellent practice. The more you practice, the easier mathematics get, I promise. And I don't care what Andrew says, mathematics is not boring. Okay, let's evaluate some expressions. When m is equal to negative 1 and n is equal to 5, we're given an expression m, whoops, we're given an expression m times m. m is negative 1. So this is negative 1 times negative 1. Now a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 1 times negative 1 is simply positive 1. <clears throat> what if we're given an expression m times n. m is negative 1. Negative 1 times 5. n is 5 here. We're given the value. A negative times a positive is a negative. Negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. See? Simple. There's nothing to that. Now, what if they do this to us? What if they give us an expression m times n over n minus m? It's a simple fraction. It's got compound terms on the, in the numerator and denominator. So we begin by solving first the top, the numerator, and second the denominator, and then solve. Fractions like this are truly simple. m is negative 1. Negative 1 times n times 5. Ah, we just did that one. This 
is 5 minus negative 1. Here's where your parenthesis becomes your friends. This is not 5 minus 1. This is 5 minus negative 1. You've got to be sure and keep your signs straight. A double negative. Let's solve. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. 5 minus minus 1. You negate the negative. So it's 5 plus 1 is 6. Negative 5 6. This is the exact same as negative 5 6. Whoops. You can put the negative anywhere in there. It's the negative. So that's how to evaluate expressions like this. Even though they're put in fractions, even though they're multiplied, even though they're divided, added, or subtracted, the more we practice, the easier this gets. What if we have the expression 3 minus m over n? This becomes 3 minus negative 1, remember watch your signs, over 5. We negate the negative, so this becomes positive 4 over positive 5. 4 fifths. Piece of cake, isn't it? Truly. Now let's play with this. Let's see what happens when we go 3 minus n over m. Let's switch n and m and see if we can solve this. We certainly can. This is 3 minus n, which is 5, over m, which is negative 1. 3 minus 5, it's a subtraction. We turn it into an addition by making an add sign and including the negative. So this is 3 plus negative 5. What's the difference between 5 and 3? 2. The 5 is the larger number and it has the negative. Therefore, we know this is going to be negative 2 over negative 1. A negative divided by a negative, it's an even number of negatives. So it's going to be an even number is 2 over 1. And this resolves, 1 goes into 2, 2 times because this is an improper fraction. That's how that works. It's that simple. All right, got time for one more. What if we're given the expression m plus m plus n over n squared? We fill in the, we have a, a wonderful fraction with, a, with an exponent in it. We fill in the blank. This is negative 1 plus negative 1 plus 5. m plus m plus n. We are dividing by n to the second power, n squared. So what's negative 1 plus negative 1? It's negative 2. Plus 5 is going to be 3 over, what's 5 times 5? This is not 5 times 2. This is telling us multiply 5 by itself twice. 5 times 5 is 25. So this is 3 25ths. It's that simple. So I hope these expressions are beginning to help you see that by putting all of the information we have together and by practicing it, we get confident. Pat yourself on the back. You're beginning to do real algebra now because we're learning the operations. 
we're learning the rules of fractions, positive and negatives, exponents, etc. We can now put this to good practice and this will apply to many, many real-world situations. We'll begin by doing some word problems also, and I'll show you that word problems aren't that tough. Not once you know how to put them into a mathematical equation and solve them. They're really kind of embarrassingly easy. I know in algebra class, I know you had the, the tricky, classic algebra word problems like train A starts at this point and goes so fast in this direction. Train B starts over there at that point and goes so fast in this direction, how long before they collide? Things like that. We'll solve those also. Don't let that discourage you. Practice math and you'll get good in no time. Keep working these videos with me, absolutely. Work every one of these equations with me. Next time I'll show you how to invent some of your own equations while we solve more equations. So thanks for watching my videos. Happy calculating! Have a great life, and I will see you in the next video.